the community events, whether it was the fire department having an event or another outside community, could have even been a wedding reception. Um, could have been a place for the kids to come and get immunizations when they needed to get some of their immunizations. Um, so that building served more of a purpose. It enriched the community fabric as a whole for the village of Mara being there. The vibrancy of the kids and the activity that happened around there created a lot of energy for the village of Morrow. Um, it also helped with the tax base. The was a building that employed um, folks to work in it meant that Morrow received some tax benefit from that. Um, and the last item on here is just the fact that it was a pleasing architectural structure um, within the village. So that was ours. And honestly, a lot of our responses from group two were very similar. I think the big thing that, that came out of the group is they liked the, the sense of community, and it was the centerpiece of the community. They, uh, many uh, of our group members talked about the accessibility and, and, and people could walk, their kids could walk to school because it was right in the heart of their community. And they really saw it as a major hub, given the, the location of the school uh, within, is, within the village that it was a great location, proximity, they liked the great arrangements of it at the time, and it was really a landmark for, for the community. So I, I just want to point this one out, that they liked the fact that it was a one through eight school, so that you were in that building, I take it, for yes. longer than two years of your schooling. Yeah, if I, I mean, just expand on that, because I don't want to kind of repeat, but one of, a couple, some of the group members talked about when they had multiple kids, that there was a transition, that they were all going to the same, same building, so they didn't have those transitions. So they really liked that part um, of the community. And they also talked about, we had one uh, a, a group member who attended more when it was a high school. So they like the fact that generational My grandparents, parents, and kids got to attend but it was the same building. Mm -hmm. So there was that connection as well. Thank you. Um, a lot of similar comments uh, from group three. Uh, a lot of history. Um, some folks went to school there. One person actually said it's home, uh, and that there's a spirit and history in the hallways. Uh, one person did mention that, unfortunately, um, it has matured, maybe time for something new. Uh, we actually had the last high school class president uh, with us today, uh, Wayne uh, Ackerman. Um, Where are you? And he mentioned that there's a solid camaraderie, there's a community that uh, was there during that time that uh, he feels that the current generation uh, doesn't have as good as, as he did. Um, although there were some rough teachers, apparently. <laughs> um, and um, again, more history. Uh, one of the uh, folks who was here tonight, um, uh, their mother taught him. Um, and then there's also students question, there's a bologna sandwich story that we're still trying to figure out how to pack. Keep we'll question number two. All right, so question number two. What impact, if any, do you believe closing Marl Elementary had on the community? And what's really interesting is that some of these comments were some of the positive comments from the other groups. So it's a nice um, uh, uh, interaction there. Uh, so when the school ceased, uh, when the building ceased to be a school, uh, operating school, um, there's a lot of inconvenience that happened. Uh, now the, the children in the area are shipped out to the other schools. Um, the economic tax base loss uh, was mentioned in ours as well, um, to the tune of around $70,000 uh, per year was the estimate. Um, that uh, now there's a, a half-day kindergarten, so the, the children are um, going outside the village uh, for a half-day for two and a half hours and then coming back, um, and that's really hurting the education. Uh, and there's a comment made that the kindergartners are actually bringing home first grade uh, homework material, so uh, there's a struggle sometimes there. Uh, they definitely created a void in the town, lost its vibrancy, which again gets back to some of the positives in the earlier question from your group. 
Uh, and now, of course, there's a lot of vandalism and it's just an empty shell. Um, and uh, the comment was made about the same for any vacant building. It's not necessarily the school specific, but it is a, an issue with the building. Okay. In terms of group two, the things that they talked about, one, they talked about it from their perspective, it divided community. They, there were three communities, or district schools, and they have in their mind that why it was more closed opposed to one of the other schools. So that was one of the comments that was made. Uh, they, they said that they lost, the parents lost quick access to the school, given its proximity uh, to the school, that they now have to travel farther to get to where the kids are. Um, And they also looked at it from the district's perspective. They said now with students having to tra travel farther, they see it as increasing the district's transportation costs. So they raised that as, as a concern. And they also looked at it from the perspective of the financial impact on the community. Um, a number of people talked about when parents would come to the school, they would also patronize the business, businesses that were located in close proximity to the school be it a store, be it a restaurant, that they supported those businesses. And now that's not the case because they're traveling farther to uh, to different locations for, for their student, for their students. And they also, another point that was made is that the community so uh, moral as a community hub. Uh, one person talked about uh, her sister's memorial service being held there. Uh, dance classes were held there. So different things for them in the community was held at the school, and they lost that when the school closed. So they don't have those things, uh, that community gathering place And the, and the final point that was made when students got assigned to other schools, um, there was some sentiments that schools weren't necessarily um, had the appropriate amenities for the school, but for the students, that you know, yeah. spaces were made but the, not the right size. So that was an observation that some of the uh, participants had for this group, group two. These guys covered pretty much most of the stuff on our list. The only thing that I would add um, to ours is that when the building closed, for obvious reasons, the school district lost that additional seat capacity. The ability to allow for some more enrollment growth in the district. So other than that, I think we, you guys covered it. So question number three. Um, if there is a strong desire to preserve the existing Morrow Elementary building, are there portions of the structure that are deemed more valuable to the community than others? Um, so really what we were getting at with this question is that if we find a really good use for that building, but it doesn't add up to 50,000 square feet like the current building has, is there a portion of the building that we feel is more important to the Morrow community than the rest if we need to eliminate an addition or take a portion off to be able to save some costs operationally. So for us, the two pieces that stood out were the original structure, because of its historic significance, and the gym. Seeing the gym as something that would be valuable for the community as a whole. We also just had the, we had the comment um, a couple times with if this building does get torn down, it is in a floodplain. The question is, can we even rebuild a new building in its place? Since then I have had conversations. Yes, we can rebuild. There's, but there are just, we just have to make sure that we follow additional regulations when it comes to building in a floodplain. So that site does not need to stay there vacant if that building has to be done up, okay? Uh, from group two, the first thing that someone said is to keep the whole building. But then as the conversation progressed, then it shifted to what makes financial uh, sense for the district. And if it's more cost effective to tear the building down 
then the, the group too would say it could tear down because there are emotional ties to the building. Uh, they are more concerned and interested, interested in seeing that site being used for something that has the community benefit. I think that kind of sums up what group two was saying and what I heard from them. And uh, for group three, uh, the oldest part of the building um, was the, the most attractive uh, that they would, uh, in response to this question, if they had to think about tearing down part, parts of it, they would really like to keep that 1913 piece. Um, although somebody did mention that um, if the if the cost uh, worked out to try to keep the whole building, because more of a financial model than necessarily a um, architectural heritage uh, uh, aspect. We also had the uh, floodplain discussion as well. So on um, question number four, how should Morrow Elementary School building and site be used in the future? Uh, the number one uh, was for school. Uh, but then listing down through a lot of these, uh, I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of commonality between the groups here. Um, school administration building, community center, um, ESL, GED classes, historical society, uh, clinic for veterans, uh, Warren County Health or Vet Services or Education Center, uh, Junior Community College perhaps tied with, uh, with Little Miami Seniors uh, as, as a co-curriculum, theater, um, uh, museum, rent out as an event center uh, for, um, for scouts or reunions or weddings. Uh, and then we had a, a few um, not to do's. So one was um, don't make it, uh, don't turn into a dump. Uh, um, uh, and uh, nothing industrial, no cheap retail, hotel kinds of stuff. Um, basically making it a, a, something that enhances the community. Um, and then also um, making sure that it's economically viable uh, to give credence to the costs, uh, making sure that whatever is there is a, is a sound financial decision. Um, and if it costs more to turn it into a school, then look at another site. There's some similarities between the things that Group 3 talked about and Group 2. Um, similarly, the first thing that was said, a school. But then they, uh, the group two really transitioned to what they talked about in the previous question about making it the hub of the community and community uses. So they talked about uh, possibly that uh, site being converted into a community center with perhaps some offices in it. Uh, they talked about the library now is in the strip mall and that site could be used as, as, as converted to a library. Uh, they talked about uh, for the district Little Miami School District. Uh, perhaps it could be for the superintendent's office, treasurers, and other administrative members of the administration. Uh, there's the idea of a food pantry or a community gym, a playgrounds. And someone talked about perhaps uh, consideration could be given for housing. Uh, but the key, the key for group two was to have some use, something happening with that site, and it's just not continue to be a vacant building. Or a vacant lot. Or a vacant lot. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys covered everything we did, other than we've got the, we have a bed and breakfast idea, um, which was an example of what another um, community did with their school. Um, School was on a community center, food pantry, school administrator, it's everything that they, we did also have in here um, an artist's studio, so turning that, turning that building into kind of a community artist's building where you would have different types of artists that could have their studios in there and potentially teach classes. Um, there you go. Mm -hmm. And everything else was pretty much what you guys said. Um, question number five, are there services that the community would like to see within their town that are currently not provided? Um, grocery store, uh, was number one. Restaurants, or four restaurants. Retail, farmer's market, which kind of goes with the grocery store. 
some sort of outreach uh, building, a way for the community, for the more needy members of the community to have access to, well, we talked about food pantry, um, but to have access to services that would, would help the more needy families with clothing, with food, um, that sort of thing. Uh, arts community, uh, a medical professional building. So a place uh, could be emergent care, um, but some sort of medical facility within the village of Morrow would be uh, liked. Um, adult education opportunities and, uh, and career center was also mentioned. Those two can kind of go hand in hand. So a career center and an adult education center. Um, and we talked about the B&B on the previous one, so. <laughs> and for us, those are kind of mixed into the previous one, so I'm going to pass it on to Jack. Uh, so, so you guys the last ones here, if you're skipping the <laughs> It was a thoughtful community. community. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the, the first response was everything that was on the list before. Uh, the second response was grocery store. Right? So we've got that number one restaurant. Somebody mentioned McDonald's, and somebody mentioned no McDonald's. Um, a community college, kind of as mentioned before, uh, the co-op with the seniors. Uh, and uh, this was sort of in lines of uh, thinking about new and current students and giving them a reason to stay. So maybe there's a way that they could advance in a, in a nursing degree faster, for example. Um, but ultimately, it's to bring community and activity to that site. Um, and um, uh, multi-generational, again, kept, kept coming up too. Um, and somebody made the comment about uh, having a concern about increasing uh, septic systems because of the regulations, even though that's not part of this question, I want to make sure we get that caption. So, um, Right, number, number, number six. Number six. Would you support selling Morrow Elementary school building and site? Um, so we had no, and we had yes, uh, and we had it depends. Uh, so it really depended on who. So again, see the previous list. If there's this community attribute that's brought to the village, uh, that's that's the positive. Um, uh, but understanding that the school district. Um, <laughs> If it's not part of the school system, then they should not be the owner of that. Um, There's also an anecdote about uh, an emergency uh, brake that fell on a car and it uh, crashed through the playground. And so there was concern about if it was a school, is that the proper place for the playground? Um, this is where folks started to talk about needing to be realistic about the conditions uh, that, that are there and what are the possibilities. Um, uh, apparently, uh, Butlerville renovation didn't go so well. There were some uh, change orders, um, and so we just need to be realistic about the potential of this site uh, uh, as part of the school district. Um, and so, some thoughts about it may not be able to be kept as a school. Not sure that the site. Um, taxes. Oh, uh, somebody mentioned that she wasn't sure if she wanted the taxes to go up to keep Morrow if it was more expensive to renovate uh, versus build new. Um, and, um, oh, and then we started talking about the, the kindergarten and how um, right now the, the students are bused for, for only two and a half hours and then brought back. Um, and um, then somebody else made the comment that if kindergarten is a full day, now you're sort of doubling up the students and we're, we're struggling for room as it is. Yeah, not necessarily germane, but one that should not Yes, and for uh, question six of group two, I mean, it was a flat out yes, but not unanimous. And I have to say that. There's a couple of people that, that said no. But for all the reasons, reasons that we've talked about for potential uses of that building or site, is the reason people said yes, they would be willing to sell it. Um, for us, I think in general the preference would be um, that we would that they would ideally like to see the district hold on to that building if there was an appropriate use for that building. If the district couldn't afford to hold on to that building, 
then the preference would be to sell it to somebody that would utilize in, in lieu of demoing. Um, but yeah, it, yes, then, then we also had a discussion about um, the fact, uh, the, the question was, do we have to sell the building? Can the district hold on to the building and find another use that isn't a school use and lease the building out for that use so that the school district would, would maintain being the owner and overall control of the building, but they would be finding somebody that would come in and lease it from them. So that was part of our discussion as well. Um, that's about it. For that question, last question. If it would be more cost effective to replace the existing Morrow Elementary building with a new building, as opposed to renovating and bringing it up to code, would that be your preference? Um, and I, we actually took a poll. So we did have some conversation about this. Um, we had a lot of conversation about this, kind of leading up to this final question. I kept having to tell my group, hold on, hold on, hold on. I promise I'm going to ask that question. Um, the majority of our group said yes. The pref if it is going to cost more to renovate that building than to build new, um, that they would prefer to demo that building and build new, that it did not make sense to spend more money um, renovating it. We did have a fair number of people that did say no. They would be willing to put more money into that building for the sake of saving it. Um, so we had eight that said no, 14 that said yes, one that abstained from voting. Um, with a caveat, the yes votes were, were making the assumption, which we have answered this question now, but it was, the yes votes were assuming that something could be built on that site. What they didn't want to see is that building torn down and then come to find out that nothing can be built in its place. Definitely didn't want that to happen. And I'll tell you that group two is really concerned about the cost of one action versus the other. The thing that they talked about a lot was, I mean, to really do have due diligence in terms of what that cost would be if you were to tear it down versus build new. And they, uh, and that would be the, the driver. But and they also, and there's a lot of stipulations, and I have those stipulations listed. They said if, even if it was cheaper to do a renovation of both the building and new building, they were concerned about what would be, what would be the long-term cost, you know, in terms of uh, sustainability and energy efficiency, you know, you know, what That's what kind of cost would those be long-term? So they're saying, in terms of making this decision, is really comprehensively look at the two options and make a decision that financially a more beneficial to beneficial to, to the district long term. So I think that kind of sums up where the group two landed. Uh, we did have folks that were very interested in that cost effective approach as well. Um, that they would rather see it come down and build new uh, as long as it was uh, uh, as long as the new building was community oriented, whether it's a new school there or the building uh, has some community features that we described before. Um, uh, we did have a really interesting quote uh, um, from the, uh, the, the last president of the high school. Uh, Sometimes you need to give up on the heritage for the future. Um, they would like to see the options. Uh, they uh, the group was very interested in making sure that uh, the due diligence was done to make sure that the costs were looking at, at um, uh, renovation versus build new, and then if it was crazy expensive, better to demo and, and build new. Uh, again, the floodplain comment came up again, um, but in the last 50 years, it's flooded zero times. Um, and. Um, that uh, time is of the essence for the need. There's a, a recognition that uh, we need space, uh, and that um, potentially it could take more time to renovate that building than to build it. Um, and uh, someone from the Historical Society said uh, that um, if it's more cost effective, uh, uh, yes, but to keep that building as a resource, so kind of 
dovetailing off of uh, group number one about um, if that's not a school, don't necessarily demo the building, but use that building to, to anchor that corner. Um, and then there's also another question about uh, with the pipes flooding, is there insurance that could be tapped into for, uh, for renovation? And then we also sent out cards around that had other folks were able to write some comments um, that we'll be able to respond to. Like the other groups have those as well. Yes, we, we, we had cards. Group two had cards to tell you this was a great team. They wrote questions on cards, but they also made some final observations that I listed on uh, the sheet as well. Uh, there was a lot, and, and some of these are in the form of a question that we have as well, but they were, there was a lot of concern expressed about the travel time of students. Uh, they talked about some students on, on the bus for, the, for about an hour, and they felt that was a long time. Uh, they talked about, you know, one solution for, that could address that is the community schools or looking at other grade arrangements. One person talked about a grade four, a K-4 school. Uh, they talked about even schools where students could perhaps walk. There are no sidewalks and there's a policy around you got to have, you have to be sidewalks for students to walk to school. And the final kind of overall thing that they wanted to convey, if, if schools are made larger, that parking should be considered. That parking is a concern that really factor in parking if you're thinking of making schools larger. Those are just some additional thoughts that the committee had in addition to what they wrote on cards that were spread out. Busing. Um, so that pretty much sums up the meeting. Um, I'm going to write down my email address really quick. Um, please feel free to come down and take one of your cards if you have more questions or comments. I do, yeah? You were talking about tearing down the old building and building a new building. Is that building that you're talking about rebuilding on that site or is that going to be off site to a different location? Are you talking about if it was a, if it was a school building? Well, you were saying we're going, we've got two options, to renovate or to demolish that building and build a new building. Correct. Are you talking about building the new building on the site that exists now, or are you going to move it outside of the community? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think we know the answer to that. Um, when we look at the master, when we start developing master plan options, um, we're going to be looking at that question with regards to if we are going to be building new buildings, where the optimal locations for those buildings would be. And so we'll be taking into account a lot of you know your comments where you're talking about travel distance to and from school. So what I was going to say next also was going to be our next community meeting, which is on November 1st, the questions that we're going to be asking at that meeting, a lot of those questions kind of talk about things like how far are you will, how far do you think is too far time-wise for your child to travel on the bus? Um, and it's going to talk about some of the concerns that you brought up here so that we can then start to, in terms of the master plan, come up with thoughtful solutions with regards to where new building would go. We would not, what we wouldn't do, I don't think, would be to demo the building and just leave you a vacant lot. To build a building someplace else. The, the, well, the question would be, do, we, do they sell that property and does that building get demoed and whoever the buyer of that building is could potentially build a new building on that site. What I want to know is you have the option of demoing that building and building a new building. But is it going to be on that site if you demo, or are you going to move it off site and go someplace else? We don't know yet. We don't know the answer. So don't know we, we, we don't know the answer to that. We will be evaluating that site with regards to the school district's needs. We will be evaluating their existing sites to determine if those sites are appropriate for a school need. If those sites, if that site is not appropriate for a school need, that's when you'd be looking at the option of selling that building, and whoever you sell that building to could either renovate that building or tear it down and build new. 
I hope that answers that. Yes? So it sounds like there's a ton of, if it's not used as a school, it sounds like all the parties involved talked about, you know, kind of using it as some kind of community building. I guess my question is, is if, it, if that becomes kind of part of the master plan, does the school district then pay for creating this community building, or is that something that when it would be kind of a, we would sell it to the district or sell it to the community in hopes that that would happen? I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, it, it is a question. It's one that we know is out there when we're looking at the redevelopment of that site. Um, I think I, one of the things that I think came up quite a bit is, you know, once we, if we say it's no longer school property, and we turn, then we lose control over what happens to it. Yes, you do. Although. I would say that the district can choose to sell that piece of property to who they want to sell the piece of property to. So there would be, I mean, I would think there would be conversation that would be happening with the seller as to what is, what is, what do you envision as the future use of this site? It doesn't have to just go to the highest bidder. I, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. That might, that's probably a great question. Hey, Chris, yeah, I can, I can. District disposing of a piece of property, there the law requires a public auction. Okay. And the property is appraised, and if the district doesn't get the minimum appraisal bid from a public auction, then the district is free to sell it to whomever it wants. Okay. So there's your answer. There's your answer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so certainly, if you have other questions, you can uh, email Christy. Yeah, I'm going to write this down right now. And then that way it can be distributed. Um, and please come to the community meeting on November 1st because it's very different than this meeting. This meeting had a specific purpose in mind. That November 1st meeting is really looking at the district holistically. So you're going to have very, very different questions being asked at that community meeting because we are going to be looking at all of your facilities and talking about how you envision the entire future of Little Miami schools for you and your families. Okay? All right? That's all we got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.